Welcome back to this episode of Sustainable Energy. Today we're looking at how forests are helping us address global climate challenges and how we can protect them. In eastern France, there's a national park dedicated to forest protection and conservation. It covers 241,000 hectares. That's about the size of the Réunion Island in the Indian Ocean. In certain parts, local farmers have agreed not to disrupt the forest ecosystem for it to continue to grow naturally. At the Foray National Park, forests are not to be disturbed. Humans have to work around them, so plants and animal lives can continue to thrive. Veronique Genvey has been running it since its launch in 2019. Her plan is to set an example on best forest management practices. This space is dedicated to knowledge. It's an outdoor laboratory to study forests, to look at how they evolve naturally and how climate change affects them. And that knowledge will then be used to better understand the development of the forest. The park is a national project managed by Veronique's team and the National Forest Office, the ONF, a government agency who runs state-owned forests. Zoe Lefort's job is to ensure that the park follows the ONF regulations. What is so special here? I think we have very really beautiful forest, uh, lots of biodiversity, lots of tree species, lots of plant species, lots of wild animals. Further away in the forest, a team of forest rangers are marking trees. Some of them will be cut and sold. Others must be preserved. Hi. So what are you doing here? I'm doing an inventory on groups of trees that are 60 centimeters large and more. So I'm going to mark this okay. one. Jean tells me the reason he's marking this thin hornbeam is because it's getting in the way of a nearby oak tree. And oaks produce better quality wood. A few meters away, the team leader Stefan shows me how tree marking works with larger trees. Those ones will be chopped for money using a special hammer stamped by the ONF. Is this okay, the right position, so I hit like this? Perhaps you should get a little closer to the tree. Ah, got it. So this is the official seal, ready to be harvested. Now it has a market value, we can sell it. Whereas before, we were not allowed to chop it. I'm told that the value of each tree varies from one species to another. The value of this beech tree, for example, is about 60 euros per cubic meter. Morgan, what is the wood used for after it's being harvested? Uh, you have different parts of the tree. You have the first part, which is uh, more for furniture, or uh, which is what is noble. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you have other parts. And uh, at last, you have uh, firewood. And the last part of the tree, it stays on the ground and it stays in the forest. And that's for the soil. Although the wood industry is leading the local economy, some trees must be protected for the forest to thrive. And here they are called biodiversity trees, and there must be at least eight of them per hectare. What's a biodiversity tree? It's a tree which is really uh, important and uh, we want to keep it uh, all his life and uh, all his uh, death because uh, when he will fall on the ground, it will be left uh, here. Because uh, there is about 25% of forest species who need the dead wood and uh, those kind of trees to live. What is this mark on the tree? That's uh, for uh, everyone knows that uh, this tree won't be cut, and we don't have the right to cut it. 70 companies live off the local wood industry. Some critics have called the park authorities too radical in their environmental approach. But Véronique Genovet is trying to meet another challenge, creating a harmony between human activity and their forest protection strategy. There are many villages on this land. There isn't a single area where man hasn't been using the natural resources attached to it. And that's quite unique. So it's a big project that will span over 15 years and that includes a whole bunch of regulations on various fairly classic rural themes. For instance, we help farmers set up agriculture techniques that are most respectful of water, air, nature. Veronique and the Foray National Park team are promoting a multifunctional forest management approach, one that takes into consideration its environmental and economical value. 
its touristic appeal and its utility as a source of sustainable energy. 87% of this forest is owned by the state, but in most parts of France, private owners are the majority, and forest exploitation is up to them. So they hold the key for sustainable management plans, and not only in France, but across 22% of the world's forests, which are also privately owned. Many forests across France and Europe are privately owned. How do you convince owners of the benefits of protecting their woods? In France only, forests are owned by more than 3 million people and they have very small parts of uh, forest in most cases. But it's very important that they take care of their forest because these forests will store CO2 emissions, will generate oxygen, they will filter water, they will retain the soil, and all these benefits, all these services, they are valued by scientists at 1,000 euros per hectare per year. So they provide a huge value for the society, so they need to take care of that. What sort of public action is needed for forests to be better protected? They're very simple. Public actions need to take place to fight deforestation, stop deforestation. Every single forest needs to be sustainably managed. But also, they need to promote reforestation at a large scale, because today we need to restore forests. Stefan, together we've talked about reforestation, forest conservation and agroforestry. What are your hopes for the future of forests in the world? Well, I've got great hopes. I believe that people start understanding the importance of forest in our daily lives. And this is the entry point for a better future for us and for forests. We need companies and individuals to support reforestation. So you can do that by financing a project of their heart, but they can also come and field and plant trees themselves. Thank you, Stefan, for showing us the way and for sharing your views on growing and protecting forests. Thank you, Asha. The future of forestry looks bright. 59 countries signed up to the Bonn Challenge in 2011 and promised to reforest 350 million hectares by 2030. But some experts suggest it's not just about reforesting land. A greater focus on protecting and restoring natural forests is also needed. Well, that's it for this edition and for this season of Sustainable Energy. This year, we've traveled the world to meet scientists and project leaders who use nature-based solutions to make the planet more sustainable. And it's been a pleasure to share this journey with you. As always, you can comment on our program or share your story about sustainable energy on Twitter at CNBC Energy. We'd love to hear from you. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, goodbye.